I'm with Mel Leyland, Australian adventurer, TV icon, perhaps best known as one half of the Leyland brothers. Uh, Mel and uh, his wife Lorraine are the proud owners of uh, Jürgen's uh, Skygazer. Mel, uh, tell me a bit about the van. Well, we wanted a van that would suit just the two of us because we've, um, we've, our family's grown up now. <laughs> mm. And we also wanted a van that had all the luxuries. We've reached that stage in life where we like to have everything. And uh, for its size um, and its weight, it was just perfect. Mm. It, it only weighs uh, 1,450 kilos. Um, and as long as you don't overload it, that brings it well within the range of our towing vehicle. And the other thing is that it's a single axle van and it means that uh, we're able to manoeuvre it by hand very easily if we have to. You, you know, some caravan parks can be a bit tight, well, you can get Absolutely. it into a good spot that way. And have you optioned it up or made any special modifications yourself? No, it's just as it came out of the factory, at least so far. And um, it's uh, been performing pretty well. We, we've had no real problems with it yet. Mm. Um, and to my amazement, it, it tows very, very well without any um, uh, sway bars or, mm. or, well, load levels or anything like that. It's got a, a different sort of coupling on the front, which I haven't had before, and it seems to work pretty well. So why, why Jürgens? Well, I, we've used a lot of different vans over the years, and um, I've always been impressed by the first caravan we had, which was way back 40 years ago. And it was built with a, a sandwich construction uh, in the walls using a sort of a foam, a styrene foam, and which made it very lightweight, but also very strong. And a similar technique is used for constructing mm. the Jogan's fans. And, uh, uh, and I was quite interested to see that this technique's sort of still alive and well. And of course, that's where a lot of the weight saving comes in as well. Mm. Um, mm. And the other thing is, of course, that uh, I think it's got a lot of style. Mm. It, the styling of the van is just that little bit, um, got a bit of an edge. I yes. Think. And, yeah. you know, and, and of course it's got nice luxuries. A good shower and toilets are actually en suite, really. Yeah. <laughs> well, you would have seen just about every nook and cranny of Australia. What's your favourite caravanning destination? Oh, gee, that's a tough one. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm one of these people who enjoys wherever I am at the time, so I don't really think I've ever been anywhere that I, I wished I hadn't gone. Mm. Um, but I, I guess if I was to single out any two places, give me two, right, I would say uh, North Queensland, there's a, so much to see. And, oddly enough, the other extreme, Tasmania. Okay. I love Tassie. Um, Tassie's got a lot going. In fact, we're heading down that way um, later this year. So, if you were to recommend one must-see destination to Caravan World readers, uh, what would it be? The place that they must visit before they die. <laughs> uh, I think I'd probably say Litchfield National Park in the Northern Territory. Why Litchfield? It's easy to get around because the roads are sealed except for one section which is a bit rough. Mm, mm, and there are mm. seven fantastic waterfalls in there. Mm. But I'd also add, see it in the wet season. Ah, yes. A bit more spectacular. Oh, incredible. And I've seen both the wet season. It's very nice in the dry, but if you're going to go in the dry season, go in the early dry mm. season when all the waterfalls are still running well. Um, and it's a sensational piece of country readily accessible mm. you don't need a four-wheel drive you can you know take your sedan in there yeah um and your caravan to your ask the leyland uh days what's your fondest memories i think being on the road with my daughter who was five months old when we started mm. and we had the little combi camper van and that little thing was our home for years mm. <laughs> we lived in it mm. um we got very fond of that little old bus <laughs> it used to take us everywhere um and i i just think being on the road knowing that every single place we went there was a story to tell mm. 
and we had these letters from people all over the country writing to us. Much to the amazement of mm. Channel 9, who told us we wouldn't get any letters, <laughs> they actually said the idea's not going to work because no one's going to write to a TV program. <laughs> and what do they do today? <laughs> uh, well, uh, what about your least fond memories? Do you ever get stuck in uh, some unusual places? Oh, yes, I've got a few of those, yeah. I suppose there are a couple of places I've sort of enjoyed seeing in the rear vision mirror. <laughs> but uh, getting stuck has been uh, something that has happened, but the worst possible time I remember was up near Inaminka. We'd been filming and the rain came while we were away in the desert area and we had to go, we had to drive out um, and the roads were so boggy, they were almost impassable, uh, in fact they were impassable and we reached a point where I got my vehicle bogged hopelessly, mm. I'm talking up to the door handles <laughs> in mud, um, about five o'clock in the afternoon, just before we were due to try and find a campsite. Right. So obviously we stayed there for the night, but it took us all night and most of the next day to get that out. Uh, luckily we had two vehicles, um, lots of shovel work. Mm, lots of shovel work. And then eventually when we did get out, um, all the roads were closed. We had to drive around the road closed sides. <laughs> we didn't know that they'd been closed, no. but we were stuck in there. But that was probably the worst experience because there was just nowhere to get dry, nowhere to camp. We were living tents at the time mm. and you know we just couldn't find a dry spot so we slept up sitting up in this car leaning over at an angle not a lot of fun so what is it about uh australian caravanning that appeals to you most i think caravanning appeals to us because you've got with you all your own stuff you you're not you know motels and hotels to me are like padded cells you know you get in a a lift to go up to your room and there's four or five other people there and they don't talk to you. Mm. You're mm. standing there looking at this wall. In a caravan park, before you've even parked your van, there'll be somebody popping out to say, oh, you want a hand there, mate? I'll help you unhook it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that, you know, there's this camaraderie yeah. that goes on with it. Yeah. And within 10 minutes, oh, you know, it's happy hour in 10 minutes, mate. You want to come over and sure. join us? Or we just came back from fishing. We've got a pile of fish. You want to come over and have a barbie? This is what caravanning's about. Yeah. It's not always about the traveling mm. you know it's about the people that you meet and we experienced that Lorraine and I 40 years ago when we got our first van mm. and um, mm. we never ever lost the interest in mm. it and we've never been without a van fantastic and do you have any caravanning plans for the near future you mentioned Tasmania yeah we're going to Tassie um, and we're going back to Central Australia again um, uh, we've got a lot of uh, family commitments too uh, in the next 12 months, mm. um, grandchildren and things yeah, happening. Yeah, fantastic. So we, you know, we've got to sort of juggle things around, but we're, we're looking to go to Tassie and we're looking to go out in the, into the centre. But really, with us, it doesn't make much difference. We, we enjoy it, uh, even if we get away for a weekend sometimes, which we do every now and mm. then, um, just for a few days. Mm. It's a good way to go. Terrific. Um, Looking back over the, the course of your life, your career and uh, in travel and also in media, any regrets? Not really. Um, I suppose I've been lucky. Mm. We, we've had a lot of luck. Bad luck as well as bad good luck. luck. Yeah. Um, but the bad luck wasn't associated with what we did so much. I mean, we lost a lot of money, went broke and all that kind of thing, but that was only money. Mm. Um, we've managed to keep our sense of humour, you see. It's can't important. Put a, can't put a mortgage on that. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think that the best part of what we've done, the best, you know, the, the main thing, is that we've been positive. We've had a positive outlook. And if you've got that and a good sense of humour, you've got the two main things you've got to pack. And when you got them in your van, you, it can't go wrong. I think that's fantastic advice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, make sure you've got your sense of humour when you sit back in the office and have to write all this up, don't you? <laughs> More good advice. And on that note, uh, I'll say thank you for joining me. Yeah, right. Mate. Terrific. It's been great. Thanks, Mel. Yeah. Cheers.